In this episode of the Leadership Seek series, I spoke with Anuj Khanna, Managing Director of CS Electric. Mr. Anuj Khanna, who joined his family business after completing his education, went on to become a hugely successful industrialist. He then decided to exit the business at its peak in a deal worth over 2,000 crores. Many young entrepreneurs who dream of creating businesses rarely think about how they would exit the business if and when the opportunity comes. That's why I found this chat very interesting and different because it looks at an aspect of entrepreneurship that very few of us plan for, having an exit plan. Let's hear Anuj Khanna's valuable leadership experience in the eighth episode of Leadership Speaks. Thank you for joining me. I would like to introduce to everyone that you used to be the managing director of CNS Electric. And before we start, would you like to say anything? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to have this chat with you and share my experience with you. So that's great. And thank you so much for joining me. So my first question for you is, you are a graduate in electrical and electronics engineering and have an MBA from Stern School of Business, NYU. How did your college experience help you in your entrepreneurial endeavor? So, Rehan, the way um, it works is that I think, um, you know, your studies uh, usually uh, give you a basis of two kinds. One is uh, if you are studying something very specific, uh, and you use that specific knowledge in your career, and it's a very specific uh, kind of uh, input that you have. Sometimes uh, you study a course, but you do it more as a general uh, thing, and then you uh, you learn some general tools and general frameworks, uh, which you again use in your career. So in my case, uh, my undergraduate degree, as you rightly said, is electrical and electronics engineering. Uh, many kids also do engineering as a, as a kind of a general degree, which they may not use in their future career, but it helps them, uh, you know, become analytical and learn some skills. In my case, because my business was electrical, uh, my undergraduate degree really helped me in my career specifically taught me things that I used in my career. Similarly, like an MBA degree can either be a more general degree or it can be a very specific degree, like something to do with, uh, you know, very uh, sophisticated financial modeling or some very sophisticated market research models or something like that. But in my case, my MBA degree was more general. It gave me more general frameworks and analytical skills of how to manage a business. So I would say both were quite important. That's very interesting and it's a great insight. And that brings me along to my next question, which is how important is it to do your post-graduation of just, just instead of just stopping at an undergraduate degree? I don't think there's any formula. I, uh, I don't, it depends very much person to person. Uh, some people go to graduate school after undergraduate degree. Some people don't do that. And uh, as you also know, there are some very successful people in the world who have not completed their undergraduate degree also. So it definitely depends from person to person. Uh, but of course, if you want to have exposure to a few different kind of things, then yeah, I think it's not a bad idea to do an undergraduate and a graduate degree as well. Right, that makes sense, I guess. And so you have exponentially large factories around India. What are some precautions you have taken to control waste and protect the environment? So uh, the government uh, of India as well as the state governments where your factories are located, uh, they have specific uh, rules and regulations for controlling, uh, for how you control your waste. Um, 
and i think it's important for all uh, business owners and entrepreneurs uh, to follow those rules and regulations uh, because it is our responsibility to uh, protect and save the environment in our case most of our investments and systems were more towards uh, the control of water uh, so we had uh, processes which used water and therefore you needed to have uh, effluent treatment plants effluent treatment plants are uh, process plants which uh, remove the chemicals and impurities from the water which you can then either use back in your uh, system you can either use it in your uh, flushing or in your tap water uh, not in drinking water but tap water uh, you can also use it uh, sometimes uh, the authorities ask you uh, to put it into a particular uh, let's say pipe or drainage so you can use it like that so um, it did, uh, i think most of our uh, investments were on that side but apart from that we also had proper systems for a disposal of solid waste and now also with more and more computers coming in there are also laws for uh, uh, for disposal of electronic waste so that's great and i think if we don't save our environment then obviously we're not going to survive without our environment and i think one of the most important things these days is the saving the planet and that brings me to my next question so in the recent past you have exited your investments in cns electric as an entrepreneur are you still looking for new opportunities in the same field or across different industries so you know um uh one of the things that entrepreneurs have always to be ready for is also to uh exit situations just like they are ready to enter into situations uh in our case we had an attractive offer for divestment which made sense from the point of view of some changes in our industry structure as well as some uh, structural changes which we perceived uh, in our in our own family management going forward with regards to how we were going to manage the business in a changing environment and so we did not really look for an offer to divest in a selective but when the offer came it it seemed attractive and it made sense uh, and so we decided to accept uh, the offer um throughout my uh, life at cns electric uh, one of the things that has really fascinated me is uh, the electrical energy systems uh as well as the infra infrastructure systems that uh we see in our daily lives uh, inside the cities uh, you know whether it's water transportation uh, you know or telecommunication waste management so uh going forward i will be involved in uh looking at several of these areas um from the point of view of an entrepreneur as well as from the point of view of an investor and also as hopefully as a policy maker so that's it that's really fascinating and i totally agree with you that every entrepreneur needs an exit plan at least in his life and my next question for you is one of my favorite quotes is by winston churchill he said that success is walking from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm what is one quote you really resonate with and feel has helped you in your entrepreneurial expedition so one of the quotes that i really like whether it's entrepreneurial or otherwise uh, which i which i like to use very often is uh, it's a very simple quote and it says uh, today is the first day of the rest of your life uh, so basically what it means is you know don't dwell on the past don't dwell on what has happened uh you know look for what you need to do today and look for what you can do tomorrow so i think that's an interesting uh, way to look at life uh, and be positive about uh, what you are going to do uh, rather than dwell upon too much about what what has happened already
that's a great quote so a really good choice and i think i'll definitely refer to that when i'm older and so what is one hobby you cherish and also feel in some way has helped you in being a successful entrepreneur okay so i think there uh, you know a lot of hobbies um, that one can count but i would say two two uh, two or uh, maybe a uh, two things uh, i think one i think fitness as a hobby is a very good hobby uh, and fitness could mean anything uh, for some people fitness means running uh, for some people fitness means swimming for some people uh, fitness means yoga uh, for some people uh, fitness means weight training but i think fitness as a hobby is is a very interesting uh, is, is a very uh, good hobby because it teaches you a lot of discipline and i think uh, discipline is one of the qualities that you need to have as an entrepreneur um another hobby of mine that i think maybe helps as an entrepreneur i like a lot of adventure sports so i like to go diving i like uh, river rafting i like uh, mountain climbing and i think these kind of things also uh, allow one to look outside the box and maybe uh, you know look at things uh, with a different risk profile and that also is required for an entrepreneur so i think that's great and it's really amazing that you like to do so much adventurous stuff and so you're definitely a risk taker what question i have for you sir post covid 19 in your opinion which industry will be really big and booming and which one do you think will kind of be left aside and left in the dust what i think Uh, it's not only my opinion but it's also the opinion of uh, most experts around uh, that the uh, that the industries that are most likely to suffer are the ones which involve a lot of physical customer uh, interface um so i think we are talking about things like retail restaurants uh, hospitality travel i think these are some of the major industries that are going to be affected uh but of course in in some ways all industries are affected but i think with the uh, advent of uh, communication tools and uh you know uh communication that we can do uh, virtually uh, a lot of the other industries are now adapting and learning to operate in a covid environment but like i said some things are such which you cannot do virtually and those are the ones that will suffer right so i definitely agree with you i think even technology is the way forward is the future so my last question for you is that what is your number one tip for youngsters like me who wish to be entrepreneurs when they grow up so um you know actually entrepreneurship is a very really hard subject to you either teach or to learn um but uh if i had to look at you know one or two uh points which i could give to an entrepreneur i think number one is that uh, you know entrepreneurs uh, you know learn from failures uh, and i think uh, as a part of an entrepreneur's journey you you have a lot of failures uh, while un- until you reach your successes and the idea is you need to learn from your failures and i think the second point i would say is i, I think most cases that you will see um in entrepreneurs they are very passionate about what they do so i think the other second tip would be that you need to develop certain passions uh for ideas Uh, you know things that really interest you, uh, so that you can really uh, you know uh, put in a lot of effort into into those thoughts and ideas uh, and convert them to you know a business activity or an economic activity. Right, definitely. So thank you so much for the advice. I I'll definitely use it when I am going to be an entrepreneur. And thank you so much for meeting me and giving everybody. Amazing advice. Thank you so much. Great. Nice chatting with you, Ryan. All the best. Thank you, sir.
And that concludes my chat with Mr. Anuj Khanna, Managing Director of CNS Electric. Here are two of my key learnings. First, entrepreneurs must be ready with plans to exit situations and not just plan for entry into new areas. Many young entrepreneurs who dream of creating businesses really think about how they would exit their business if and when an opportunity comes. Having an exit plan allows us to capitalize on our past success and move on to new and more interesting ideas. Second, along with education, fitness is also a key factor for success of the many hobbies one can have. Fitness is a very good one because it teaches you discipline. Fitness and adventure hobbies allow us to look outside the box and see things with a different risk profile. Since entrepreneurship has no one single formula for success, having a broad outlook and experiencing new things with both mind and body helps us to see things differently. This is the eighth in a series of my interviews. It was one of my most interesting chats with a leader who has achieved great success in life. If you enjoyed watching, please do hit the like button and subscribe to my channel. I'll be releasing my next Leadership Speak podcast very soon. Till then, think positive, have big goals and focus on the road ahead.